Okay, so today we're going to go over how to score uh, basketball games um, using the Mark V scorebook, which is my favorite scorebook. Uh, there are many different versions of basketball scorebooks. Um, they all have the same basic information, but that information may be located in different places. So if you happen to come across a different scorebook, uh, it just takes a few minutes to get yourself acquainted with it and how it's different from the one that I'm going to show you today. But this one's my favorite uh, because I think it's the most well laid out uh, scorebook. So um, in a basketball game, there'll be a scorebook that is kept by the home team. And then there's a scorebook that is kept by the visiting team. The scorebook that is kept by the home team is the official book, and the person keeping that is actually part of the team of referees, and it is the official record of the game. So the job of the scorekeeper at the home uh, site is fairly important. Uh, no matter what it says on the, the scoreboard or what the opponent's score book might say the official record is the book of the home team uh, the home book uh, so obviously it's very important that it be accurate and uh, the way to do that is to constantly check back and forth between the score clock that's going on and the uh, the opposing score book to check that say at the end of every quarter and what I do is when somebody scores, I'll just say the number and who scored. And when somebody gets a foul, I'll say the, the number of the foul, just so the person doing the clock next to me and the score book, which is next to that person, uh, we're all on the same page. Okay, so uh, in the score book, it does give a little introduction in case you forget of how to do things, uh, scoring instructions. Um, however, most people that do scorebook for a long period of time uh, will kind of come up with their own little system. As long as you're consistent and the coach can understand what the marks mean and the referees can understand what the marks mean, uh, that's all that uh, really matters. There are little idiosyncrasies that every scorekeeper has, and I'll show you some of mine as we get going. But this gives you an example and then it gives you a, a sample scored game here uh, that you have. There's some information that's there that you uh, will always put. And there's some information there, which is um, fairly optional. Uh, the most important things is to keep track of the overall score, of course, and uh, the overall number of fouls on each team and the overall number of fouls on each individual. Um, timeouts and possession are also important things to make sure that are always in the book. There are some things which are not as uh, important that some coaches really don't uh, look at because they have somebody else doing that. And that would be things like there's a place for turnovers and those types of things. And I don't keep track of that. Uh, the coach, if they want to keep track of that, we'll have some parent or an assistant coach do that. Uh, let's just go over some of the basics in the sample scored book, and then I'll go over kind of how I do things. So obviously at the, before the game starts, uh, it's supposed to actually be 10 minutes before the game starts. The book should be filled out for both the home and the visiting team. Um, the full name is not necessary, uh, just needs to be the, the last name if it's a varsity game because they're going to report those results and they'll report it by last name. A lot of times what you'll see, especially in JV and freshman games, they'll just put like the first name of the individual. Um, that really doesn't matter. Uh, the thing that's most important is that the number is correct, and that is what actually goes into the book, because when you record score, you don't do it by name. When you record foul, you don't do it by name. You just do it by number. Uh, actually, in a rush, if the only thing you had down were numbers and not names, uh, that wouldn't uh, be the worst thing in the world as you went along and filled in. But you also want to check to make sure that the number of players listed is the number of players that are on the court, and the referees will do that as well. 
typically after that, they'll draw like a line and then they'll initial underneath it. Uh, and then they'll also fill in their names here. You won't do that. They'll fill in their own names and then they'll initial the book on both sides to make sure they have the right number of players on the court. Uh, other things that you fill out ahead of time, again, the roster and the number. Uh, a coach will typically do this, um, but sometimes not all coaches are on top of things. And so if they just hand you a book and there's no names or numbers, what typically you'll go to is like a previous game and see what the players and the numbers are. And if you do that, make sure that you double check with the coach that the numbers fit with the names because some players have two numbers, say away and a home number, or somebody might have switched a number or something like that. Somebody forgot a jersey and they have to give them a different number. So always make sure that the number is the same. If a player comes out on a court and say uh, Williamson here comes out and she's wearing number 12 and it says 14 in the book and that would be a technical foul. And so obviously for your own team, you want to make sure that you don't uh, force them to have a technical foul by having a wrong number. And then it's the opposite team scorekeeper to make sure their numbers and names are correct. And so if one of them, say, Wynn came in with number two instead of number three, you would call the referees over and they would give them a technical foul. Uh, that's what they should do. Sometimes they'll give them a warning, but most times they'll, they'll give them a technical foul if it's a varsity game. Uh, JV games and uh, freshman games team tend to be a little bit more lenient on those types of things. Uh, besides the having the player and the number listed, uh, position is totally optional because people switch around all the time, so I never fill in the position. And uh, as far as quarter played, uh, the only thing I ever do is I mark the starters, and then I also make sure that the starters have their numbers correct. As the player comes in, I don't mark the quarter that they come in, and as the coach has specifically asked me to do that. Instead, the only thing I have is the starters that are listed here, and then I'll put the starters for the second half as well, and that will be in the third, and those are the only things I put down in the quarter played. Um, other things that are up here, of course, you've got uh, the home team, and you would have the visiting team. Uh, coach place would be the school that you're at. Again, the refs are going to fill in the information here for ref and up. And, uh, and I don't keep track of any of the turnovers. Again, a coach would keep track of that or assistant or a parent if they wanted to keep track of that because uh, they have different ways that they classify that. Um, and so what else you see here is POB means uh, the possession. And I don't do it this way. I'll show you how I do it, but you keep track of uh, from the tip off who gets the tip. And then every jump ball, the possession switches and at every quarter, the possession switches. So you wanna make sure that you record whose next possession it is. Uh, other things that you have here. So you have that, you have the personal fouls are listed here. And uh, so they'll call a foul on, say, Williamson. And so you mark that. And then you go down, and a personal foul is also a team foul. And so you're marking that across the bottom here. Um, other things, there's uh, the score. So two point or three point. A circle and a zero means a free throw attempt. And if it, there's not filled in, then that means they missed the free throw attempt. So um, poor Williamson here, she tried one, two, three, four, five free throws and didn't make any of them and finally made a free throw on the last one. So she was five for six. She scored uh, four points in the first quarter, two and two, and then she scored a three in the second quarter. Uh, third quarter, she scored a three and a two and then a two. And then typically here, um, most coaches will fill in all this information on their own unless they specifically ask you to do the tallies. Typically, because this takes a long time, the coach wants their book at the end of the game. 
and they don't have to want to have to wait for you to do that, or they may have their own system of recording this information that's here. Um, another thing that I do that's not done here is at the end of the quarter that what I do is I do the total so I could check the total up here. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'd put like a 14. And then I mark that quarter as being done. I check that the score is 14 here. And then I look up at the scoreboard to check that it's 14 there. And then I check with the other book, the visiting book, and I make sure that they also have 14 points. And they also have the same number of fouls that I have. Um, besides that, uh, let's see. So we've got score. Uh, timeouts are kept down here. Uh, this is not the way that I do it. I'll show you how I do it. But it's just uh, the player number that calls the timeout. But almost in all cases, the coach calls a timeout. So putting the player who did that is not necessary. Instead, what I do is I put the type of timeout it is, whether it's a full or a 30, and then I put right down the time at which that uh, occurs. Um, okay, and then um, the other thing is you have the score that goes across the top here. So by quarter, and then the final score is listed there. There is a place for overtime in case it goes into overtime. It's not very big because overtime is only four minutes as opposed to eight minute quarters. So that's listed. Uh, that's listed right here. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, I'll go through how I might score a game. Uh, this is again the example, and then the first page is here. Uh, Los Lemos is really good about making sure that the book is filled out ahead of time and you have the players listed and you have the numbers that are there. Again, position won't be listed. And then the starters, you go ahead and, and list there. And so I just filled in an example sheet here. So here's the names from the sample book that we have here. So I've listed the names down here. I've listed the numbers. Uh, something different from the book to this page, what some coaches will do is they'll list the, say, for example, Williamson, Harris, Brock, Bush, and O'Connell. They're the starting five, and so they'll list those five first, and then they'll list the other players. Notice then it goes in order 4, 11, 12, 15, 23, 24. Uh, I prefer to list all the players in the order of their number, and it just makes it easier when you're looking for a particular number who scores a point or gets a foul if everything is in order instead of jumbled up because you put the starters here. Um, so that's just personal preference. Again, a lot of coaches will put their – have the same starting five every time, so they'll put those first, and then they'll list the the subs in, in order, or sometimes they won't list the subs in order. But if I get a visitor's book, I'll take the time to go ahead and put win first and then Vance, and then I'll go through and put it in, in order on my side. So I have the players here listed in, in, a, in numerical order. And then I'll go up and I'll ask the coach beforehand. Again, this should be done 10 minutes before. In reality, uh, sometimes this is done two or three minutes before the game. Because uh, coaches are busy or they're not as organized as other coaches. And so you go up and you ask, okay, who's going to be the starters? And they'll either mark the starters or they'll tell you who the starters are. It's better if they mark the starters because that way they can't uh, say that there was an error on the scorekeeper. It, it would be an error on them. So let's see. We'll have one, two, three, four, five. So those five players started. Again, if if Davis comes out because Davis quickly gets two fouls and Martinez comes in to replace them, I, I don't mark uh, that Martinez played. Uh, the record of who plays and how much they play, again, typically is a, an assistant coach job or a parent volunteer job or something like that, uh, not the scorekeeper. Uh, if somebody does come in, though, if Martinez does sub in, they go through the desk, and when they sub in, I look for their number, and I make sure that their number is in the book. Uh, I don't have to ask them their name because, again, the number is the only important thing. 
And again, position is, is not filled in at all because a lot of players switch to different positions on the court. So that's not important to be listed. Uh, all this information up here should be filled in. Uh, team, coach, place. And again, the refs do that themselves. I don't keep track of turnovers. And uh, possession is going to be something that I'll handle on my own. And instead of doing it the way that the book did it, uh, there'll be each team is either going to be the uh, uh, a color, and uh, and they have to use a funny part about a few things interesting about uh, basketball is that the numbers they all are numbers that are under five because when they give a foul they have to give it with one hand. And so they might say foul on two, foul on four. If it's 12, they'll go 12. And so that's why all the numbers have to be on, uh, five or under. Um, and then as well, when they say the colors, uh, they can't say like scarlet or they can't say purple. Instead, they'll stick to monosyllabic. So if you're scarlet, you'll be red. And or so typically when I'm doing here, uh, if we're home or away, we're either going to be red or white. And the other team, say we're playing Miramani, is going to be green. And so Miramani gets the tip. So I'll put G, and that's the tip. And then we have a jump ball, and we get the jump ball next time. So it's white, and it happens at uh, 6 minutes and 12 seconds into the first quarter. And then there's another jump. So that one's going to be green, and that occurs at 4 50 and then another jump ball so that's going to be white and that occurs at 212 and that's the only jumps that we have and so start the starting uh possession on the second quarter is now going to be green and so i'll put green and i'll put second quarter and so if there's any ever a question as to whose jump ball it is i have a record not only do i have a record of whose ball it is but i also have the exact times in case there's any question uh, the referee is also keeping the po point of possession and so is the the score clock operator is keeping the possession arrow uh, but this is just a way of being uh, more accurate making sure that if there's any question again you can go back and say exactly how many uh, jump balls there were and exactly when they were okay um uh so the the game starts and uh davis scores two and so i just put a two i don't put x's because that's just extra marks i don't need an x all i need to do is draw a single line through that uh warwick gets a three and so now we go to five and you don't mark every i don't mark everyone along the way some scorekeepers do they'll mark okay two so one two and then scores a three one two three i only score on the on the point value and then we have a foul and so martinez is at the line she's shooting two so i'll put two circles and then she makes the first of that so i put a dot that's the way i do it a single dot means that uh, it was a made free throw uh, some people will put a single X. Some people will put a double X. I just put a dot. And she makes the second one. Good job, Martinez. And so now we have seven points as we move forward. And now there's a stop of play because we have a foul. And the referee comes over and the, the referee goes foul on 2-1. And so 2-1 is here. So they get a personal foul. Personal foul also goes down into the team fouls. Uh, a couple of other things I do is, and this is just a personal thing, uh, timeouts are listed down here. Uh, you could do this across the top, across the bottom. I do it across in the side of the book here is that every team gets two 30s and three full timeouts. And so I just mark those there. You can mark across the top, mark across the bottom. This is totally something that I do and I just learned to do from another scorekeeper that had done it for years and years and years. And the reason for that, say in the first quarter, we take a timeout and uh, that timeout is a 30. 
And then I'll mark uh, this occurs at 412 in the quarter. There's not a lot of room, but typically coaches until maybe the fourth quarter aren't taking a lot of timeouts in one particular quarter. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll just cross out the 30. And the reason for this is when it gets stressful towards the end of the game and the coach wants to know how many timeouts are left, you don't have to go down here and count how many timeouts minus how many they started with. It's really easy to see here. We have 130 and three fulls remaining. So that's why I keep that tally over on the side here. Um, if a player gets a technical, the technical is listed down here, the player number. Uh, what also can happen is this could also be a coach that gets a technical. That tends to be uh, as often as a player getting a technical. In each case, if it's a coach getting a technical, it's a team foul. Uh, if it's a player getting a technical, it's a team foul, and it's the personal foul against the player that's taking that. Uh, the only thing that's also not listed here is a lot of times there'll be warnings to the players or the coach. And uh, in order to uh, make sure that the, the coach understands or the player understands that they have been warned, they'll come over to the to the score table and they'll say warning on player 21 for maybe taking too much time or touching the ball after it went through the basket or getting too close to the player as they're doing a, uh, an inbounds. And so in that case, all I do is I make the notation down here. It could be a warning on coach because uh, they're using, you know, obscene language or they're complaining too much. And so I'll just wrote, write like coach warning. And that this might be in the second quarter and it might be at uh, three minutes and 12 seconds. So I've marked that down here. So now if the coach does it again, they'll give him a technical foul. He'll say, hey, you didn't give me a warning. I said, well, you gave, you got a warning in the second quarter at 312. So yes, you did. Again, so you're recording everything. Again, you're the official record. If uh, you know Schwartz then scores a two and you mark two here and these, the guy doing the um, uh, score clock uh, – accidentally hits a three or accidentally hits plus one instead of plus two um, and it goes on and the coaches notice or the umpire notices uh, they'll come over and they'll say hey what does the book say i'll say well the book says it's nine on score and it's one foul and i'll check with the other book and uh that you know, if there's a discrepancy, my book is the, the official record. So actually, I'm part of the – or not me. The person that's doing the home book, the official book, is actually an official. Uh, you're part of their team. You're not part of the Los Lomas uh, coaching staff. You're not part of the Los Lomas uh, community. You're actually an official uh, part of the game. Uh, and that, there's a little bit of responsibility that goes with that. Uh, when you're keeping records, you're really not cheering. You're really not complaining uh, about calls or something like that. You're just there focused on the game. And a little bit more about that is is the more that you're engaged in the game as opposed to having a side conversation with someone, the more you're engaged with the game, the easier it is to do this because – you can, if you know who has the ball, it's really easy for you to then figure out who scored as opposed to somebody scores and you look, oh, who scored that? Uh, if you're you know, engaged in the game, you know who scored that. And if uh, you're watching game and somebody fouls uh, and you're paying attention, typically you know who, who the foul is going to be on. You can anticipate that ahead of time and, unless it's, you know, a scrum under the basket or something like that, but typically you can anticipate uh, what's going to be called. And that's good because a lot of times, uh, not a lot of times, but sometimes uh, the referees might get the numbers wrong. Um, and so, you know, they look really quickly, the numbers crumpled. And so instead of a one, they see it's 24. 24 doesn't happen to be in the game or 24 happen to be on the other side of the court. And you just call the referee over, and and uh, typically you ask the the clock operator, "Hey, can you buzz the ref?" 
and they'll buzz the ref will come over and then you could clear up any of those discrepancies um, and again when as i'm doing this there's also typically a visiting book and so if there's a foul on 30 i'll say foul on 30 that's their first foul and that way the scoreboard operator knows that and then the the guest book also uh, verifies that as well and this is particularly important as players get more fouls as they approach five fouls which is disqualification that everybody understands and knows how many fouls are on uh, individuals uh, sometimes you can uh, warn the coaches it's up to the the official book the official book is not required to warn the coach hey uh you know player 33 has four fouls uh and say 33 then gets fifth foul you didn't do that and they're like well you didn't warn me well i don't have to warn you you should know how many fouls are on each of the players it's somebody somebody on your table should be taking care of that some parent volunteer assistant coach uh you can and typically it's a nice courtesy to tell not only your side but again you're impartial as the official book to tell both sides is somebody getting into into foul trouble as well as if they're running out of timeouts. A lot of times coaches are not paying attention in their mind how many timeouts they've taken. And so as they get towards two or one timeout left, you just remind them, hey, coach, you only have one timeout left. And so they're generally appreciative of that. Okay, so the quarter ends. And so we have uh, not, a, not a high scoring, great defensive game here. So we have five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine points. So I'll put a nine. I'll put that here. I'll put a line so I don't, when the next quarter starts, I don't try filling in the first quarter again. And so I'll go nine. I'll ask the guest book, do you have nine? Yes, they have nine. And then I'll look up at the score clock and it says nine. So we're all good. As I'm marking, I'm always just in my mind, I'm always looking up at the score clock. Whenever there's a foul, I'm always looking up at the score clock because uh, the score clock has a lot going on. And sometimes there might be a mistake that's made. Again, your book is the official book. Your Yours is the official record of the game. So it's important that you are always accurate. The good part is no one sees your book, whereas if a clock, score clock operator makes a mistake, everybody sees that. No, trust me, uh, everybody will let the score clock operator know that there's a mistake. Hey, hey, you put the points on the wrong side or something like that. Um Again, so uh, so we're at the end of the first quarter, nine here. What I also do is I go up here and I put a shaded in area on the nine. So that tells me that that was the end of the first quarter. Um, and then we only had one foul and so that's it. So we go on for the rest of the second quarter. Uh, again, keeping track of the possessions. Uh, so next quarter, next team gets possession. And at the end, you just fill out the final score, and that's it. And that's the coach asks you to go ahead and fill in this part. This part would be easy. You just mark the number of twos. So that's one, two. They had zero threes. They were zero for zero. And here you put the total points. And so this player scored two points. When you get done, you total up the total points down here. Total points should match the final score that's up here. So that's the way of double checking that you have everything. Um, I think that's about it. Um, you know, it's just, it's just uh, you know, being engaged in the game. It's, it's not, uh, if you like the game of basketball, then it's really not a difficult job because you're always involved in the game. You're always actively, you know, seeing what's going on and being involved in, in, everything uh again the most important things are communication communication between you and the ref and the umpire and the clock operator and scorebook operator so i help hope this helped